like to welcome everybody, the council members, members of the community, staff. Um, we are uh, taking all of our votes roll call tonight. Um, if you have a question or a comment, there will be a way for you to call in at the end. Uh, first, let's uh, call the meeting to order. And uh, Clerk Norris, would you start with the roll call? Mayor McClellan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Here. Council Member Radner, who's muted. Wave your hand. There you go. Thank you. Council Member Weiss. Council Member Edgar. We need to unmute those folks. Okay, uh, we have a quorum uh, for tonight's meeting. Um, we have a moderator who will be helping with the call to the audience section when we get to item 16. Um, uh, there needs to be a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. And a second. Regina Weiss. Um, uh, all those in favor, uh, as, um, Clerk uh, Morris, would you call the roll? Yes, I will. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Yes. Council Member Edgar? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Radner? Can we unmute him, please? <clears throat> Council Member Weiss. Yes. Okay. Yes. Motion carry. Um, next, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So motion, motion to approve. Seconded. I've been seconded. Uh, the following items are presented without discussion as a single item. A, regular city council meeting minutes of March 16th, 2020. B, special city council meeting minutes of March 16th, 2020. C, planning commission meeting minutes of February 10th. D, board of review meeting minutes of March 9th. E, payment application number three for the 2019-20 water main replacement project M704. The Macomb Pipeline and Utilities Company of Sterling Heights, Michigan for the amount of $85,197.60. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, Clerk Norris, would you do a roll call, please? Council Member Edgar? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Radner? Yes. Council Member Weiss? <clears throat> She is muted. Got you. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Yes. Yes. Um, we don't have visiting elected officials or special presentations uh, or accounting reports. We will go uh, directly to City Manager um, Eric Tungay for item 14, the report of the City Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of Council. Um, I'd like to ask Director Robert Barrett to uh, take 14A for me, please. And I see he's on. Can we unmute him, please? not technical difficulties please technical stand technical difficulties okay i apologize give me one second i'm having a hard time finding him in this list here there he is okay he's unmuted director barrett there you are good evening eric uh, mayor and city council members uh, before you is a resolution and a um, right-of-way permit agreement with uh, the Road Commission for Oakland County. Um, 
I'm sorry, which one is first? Is it the road commission or the? Uh, it's the right of way. The right of way agreement with the Michigan Department of Transportation. Okay. So as part of the uh, Safe Routes of School, um, we have to um, authorize by resolution a, an agreement with RCOC for us to pay them to maintain the traffic signals and um, traffic control devices uh, for the improvements from the Safe Routes of School project. Uh, and that includes the cost, electricity, and any damage that may occur from any traffic accidents or so forth. Um, it is recommended that City Council approve the attached agreement with the Road Commission for Open County for operating cost and maintenance of traffic signal improvements installed with the Safe Routes of School grant. It is further recommended that Council allow Mayor McKellen to sign the agreement on the city's behalf. Is there a motion uh, to approve this agreement? So moved. Regina Weiss. Mm -hmm. Second. Second, Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Um, is there discussion or questions about this? Okay, um, uh, Clerk Norris, would you call the roll? Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Radner? Yes. Council Member Weiss? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Yes. Council Member Edgar? Yes. Motion carry. Uh, Director Barrett, I think you might have skipped 14A, but if you could go back over 14A, request Thank to you. adopt a resolution approving a right of way agreement with, a, with MDOT for the Very Plaza good. Bridge property. Um, the second agenda or the other agenda item is a right of way permit agreement with MDOT uh, for the Yeshiva schools on our Plaza deck on Church Street north of uh, 10 Mile Road. Uh, the Yeshiva schools is in the processing uh, process of corrupt, constructing a new school in the northeast corner of 10 and Church. Initially, they sought out an agreement between themselves and MDOT, um, but that was going to be an expensive proposition for them. I think they're going to charge them more than 80000 a year to issue a permit. And MDOT suggested that they would give the right-of-way permit to the city at no cost, and we can pass on some type of sub-recipient agreement to, to MDOT to allow them to construct a curb and pavement in that area. It is recommended the city council adopt the attached resolution and it is further recommended the city council authorize city manager Eric Tungate to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. Okay, we need a motion to adopt this resolution. So, so uh, Regina Weiss and uh, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Um, is there a discussion about this? Regina Weiss? Yeah, I, I just had a question. Um, so I think it's great that we are able to get that permit at no cost. Are we going to need to vote on a subsequent agreement with Yeshiva to add them to that? Once we have that uh, sub-recipient agreement prepared, uh, we will bring it to a council for approval. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Um, council member Edgar. Yeah, so why why would um, the road commission want to charge the yeshiva $80,000, but the city nothing? And are these sub recipient agreements okay? Are they are they legal? I will say that I think I believe it's in their bylaws and the state law that they cannot uh, provide a right away permit to use that property for free, but they can uh, do so to mis municipalities. And we are um, working with our city attorneys on reviewing both of these sub-recipient agreements. And it's basically detailing the amount of items that can go into that right away and limiting us in the Shiva school to just construct pavement and, and curbs and some drainage. And they don't want any permanent structures up there such as uh, fences or garbage dumpsters or some other items that were originally po proposed. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, Ed Norris, would you call the roll, please? Um, Council Member Radner. He's muted. Yeah, thumbs up. Council Member Weiss. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. 
Yes. Councilmember Edgar. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Thank you. Um, item C is the city manager update. Things have been busy in the city of Oak Park. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, I'm gonna give a little bit of a lengthier update here than I normally do, so please bear with me. I'm gonna cover a lot of information very quickly. Before I do any of that, I wanna take this opportunity to thank our residents, our business owners, and, and also our employees. Um, we have men and women out there on the front lines fighting the good fight every day. And it is, uh, it's heroic to say the least. Um, in the last you know, 72 hours we've had, um, obviously the coronavirus situation has hit us hard. Um, we have as many as four employees now who um, we, can, we believe are, are confirmed positive. We've also had a homicide in the last 24 hours. We also have been hacked by an IT <laughs> hacker from overseas and we're dealing with the hacking issue, um, which has really disabled a lot of our IT networks and systems. I wanted to go through kind of a status report in terms of where we are today as it relates to our coronavirus situation. As of 5 p.m. yesterday, we had about 272 cases here in the city of Oak Park um, with about 1% of our population being tested. Um, that puts us uh, at the highest concentration in uh, Oakland County, second to one of the zip codes in uh, Southfield who has 232 cases as of 5 p.m. yesterday. I did reach out to the uh, Deputy County Executive today. They, they told me they're gonna be uh, submitting um, uh, where these deaths in Oakland County are occurring um, in, the, in the coming days here and some more detail on that. Um, as far as what the city has done, um, this is gonna seem like a blast from the past for some of you, but believe it or not, in the last few weeks, we've declared a local emergency. We have closed all public buildings through April 13th um, to comply with the governor's order. Um, remember, we initially closed our public facilities through April 5th, and when the governor's order came through, we expanded it to match the uh, governor's order. We suspended all boards and commission meetings until after April 13th. We've done no water shutoffs for 30 days. Um, and we've turned back on, I believe, all water uh, that it was turned off. We've agreed to offset vendor fees for online transactions through April 13th. We suspended late fees and penalties through April 13th. The city's water department is it's canceled all existing in-home appointments and not scheduling new routine home visits for leak detection and other services through April 13th. And the city's building division will be canceling, or has canceled, I should say, all existing in-home appointments and not scheduled new appointments for interior residential building inspections through April 13th. And let me just say that should the governor amend or extend or change the order that she previously submitted, and I saw some news reports today that suggests she's going to revisit this within the next week, then we would be subjected to whatever that deadline, that new deadline is. Um, I, I could consult with our city attorney, but I believe that means all of these things would um, hopefully uh, extend out to that time with some exceptions maybe. And if there are exceptions, we'll have to bring those back to you at your next meeting. Um, I also wanted to go through a couple of other things in terms of what we've done internally. We have instituted some internal procedures uh, and, and this is gonna be all over the place, but cleaning procedures were in public safety especially we're cleaning as many as three times a day we've done a uh, fogging technique uh, throughout public safety and we have uh, done a fogging technique in all of our public safety vehicles um, you know this is this is stuff that I think just gives them I mean besides the fact that it's cleaning these surfaces and, and potentially killing the virus it also gives them a, a sense of peace with this whole thing um, as far as public safety goes, we're maintaining all of our direct law enforcement activities, public works, staff is rotating in, in the field to maintain safe and sanitary public parks, water and wastewater. Uh, city clerk, we're only performing activities necessary to manage and oversee elections. Um, finance, we're doing accounts payable, payroll, 
check processing and other essential tasks. Um, library, we're trying to do as much online programming as we can. Same with recreation, economic development, same thing. We're trying to promote business assistance programs online. You may have seen some of our social media posts. Technical and planning, we're still doing animal control, uh, code enforcement on an as needed basis, um, and an engineering to perform inspections on contractors performing essential tasks. HR, we're, we're just doing benefit administration on an as needed basis. And IT um, has really been up to their eyeballs because our IT director has been facilitating our response to the hacking incident and is facilitating the ability of our staff to work and take calls remotely. We are also in the process, um, I believe at this point now, where all calls that would have normally come to City Hall are now being answered remotely by city staff. And we're trying to assign as many activities to city staff who are not physically in the office as we possibly can. Um, public safety has supplied all officers with proper uh, PPE as it's called, personal protective equipment it includes gloves and 95 masks and eye protection. I don't know if, it's, if you've seen some of them out and about, but, but they, uh, they're all doctored up. Um, they have implemented telephone reporting. They're no longer completing citizen fingerprinting. They're no longer administering preliminary breath tests in the lobby as they used to do. And officers are taking lobby reports from behind protective glass. Having said that, obviously, as I said a moment ago, public safety is still uh, almost entirely operational. Um, we also have implemented a daily screening process in line with the Oakland County Health Department's order that requires us to do a symptom check of all non-public safety employees as they enter city buildings, um, even though that's very few employees at this point, but we have now put that into place. We have, in fact, we have a box at each uh, entrance where they fill out a form confidentially and, and put it in the box that uh, if they're exhibiting any of the symptoms, obviously we have to follow up on that. Um, we are also, putting together a much more uniform communication strategy. You may have seen my um, uh, video. I believe we did an e-blast this evening, right before the council meeting. And I believe it went out on social media on Saturday. Um, hopefully our, our residents will see that as an informational tool. Um, I know there's a lot of information coming at our residents at this point. Um, I'm getting a lot of information. I'm sure all of you are as well. And what we're trying to do is really be the ones to digest all of it and you know, put it out in a, a reasonable, understandable format so as to not confuse people even more so. I'm getting an email from every organization I've ever contacted, just like I'm sure you are too. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, obviously, this is a very concerning situation. I'm hoping that this week is the apex of this and, and after this we can move forward and, and um, start to go down the slope in this thing. Um, you know, I would encourage all of our residents as I've done continuously and I know members of city council have as well to continue to practice the safe social distancing. Um, that means, you know, not having parties, you know, not having people over, um, you know, not, uh, you know, lingering about. Um, the, the more we can do that right now, the more chance we have of getting out ahead of this thing and, and uh, stopping it. So any questions? A council member, um, your Weiss. Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. I know that the city of Detroit has received um, some testing kits that can process uh, COVID testing very rapidly within a, um, within a few minutes, I believe. Um, and they're using them. I know they're using them on their police and first responders. Do you know if there's any, since we are a hot spot, if there's any possibility of getting one of those for our public safety? I do not know that yet. Um, I've been asked that question a few times today. Um, I do have a message in to, to see about that. Um, I honestly have no idea at this point. I totally agree with you. I mean, this is obviously a very, um, you know, where we are here in Oak Park, we're a hot spot, as it's called by the media. But um, testing is going to be the key, just the same as, you know, mitigation is the key. 
So if we can get our hands on those in any way, shape or form, and I think I might've seen James Jackson on this call somewhere, um, it'd be great to know uh, in terms of federal resources or state resources or even county resources, if we could get some assistance in terms of getting our hands on those because testing people and knowing who has it and who doesn't is gonna be one way to get out ahead of this thing too. So more to come on that. Thank you. Further questions? Um, seeing none. Um, thank Mayor, can I say one more thing? Please, yes, do. I, I just wanted to add, um, you know, I, I know this is a very difficult situation. Um, these are very challenging times. Um, you know, we're all living it, but I can assure you that this won't break us and we will get through this as hard as this is. Um, we will make it through this. This city will make it through it, um, rest assured. So just, you know, follow the mitigation steps and, you know, doing, do what's being asked of you right now. And, um, you know, we'll get to the other side of this, I, I promise. And with your leadership, we will certainly get there. Thank you. Thank you. City Manager Tungate. Um, now we are at call to the audience. Um, uh, any person being heard at a city council meeting may be called to order by the chair, um, if not, germane to the business of the city for vulgarity or personal attacks. And there is a three minute uh, limit per speaker. For Zoom video conference participants, please use the raise your hand feature on the Zoom platform. Uh, the moderator will call on you and unmute your microphone so that you can comment. And if you're calling in by phone, the number is behind me on the wall, um, the moderator will call on people by the first letter of their last name, beginning with those whose last name begins with an A, a B, a C, a D, and so on. If your last name begins with a letter, please speak and state your name and address and comment. Uh, that portion of the meeting will be tricky, so we ask for your patience. Uh, we're uh, trying to get this uh, show on the road, and we're, we're in the process. Uh, People will be given an opportunity to read into the record their comments, and they will be read at the end by our clerk, City Nor uh, Ed Norris. And um, do we have members of the community who would like to speak? Mayor McCollin, if I could just, uh, just a quick clarification for people who aren't as familiar with the platform. Right. If you want to raise your hand, you have to click on participants at the bottom of the screen. And then on the right, you'll see a list of participants. And then um, on the right of that an option that says raise hand. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. This is Kim Maroney, the moderator. I believe we have city commissioner Helene Zach who had raised her hand. Um, I'm going to unmute you. So we can speak. You're unmuted, Helene Zach, if you'd like to speak. Thank you. I'm glad that I got recognized and I want to congratulate all of you for going virtual. Um, it's a different world and it, it certainly took the Board of Commissioners five trials for us to go live before we could the right platform for 21 of us. So thank you for every, everything that you're all doing. Um, I have not heard from the Oakland County side about the rapid testing yet. That would be a miracle to get something in our county, but there's been no talk of it yet. Um, Councilwoman um, Regina Weiss. So in any case, um, I do wanna remind everybody that public health is part of the county function and to get most up to the minute date updates from the county, you can go to www.ocgov.com slash COVID. There is a wonderful data map, a zip code map, so you can get daily updates of numbers. You can go into the Oak Park zip code and see the percentages of these are the 
reported cases of corona um, virus. There's also text updates if you want to sign on to that. If you text OakGov and you do uh, to 28748, you can get the latest alerts from the county. Um, and there's a tremendous amount of information on the county website, like city manager Tungate said, it's easier to digest. Um, another thing is I actually watched a webinar today from Cranes talking about small business help. It is very complex. Um, best thing that people can do, you can go to your unique banks and some banks are doing small loans that are part of the Small Business Association. There's no list yet. You can go to your common bank or you can go to SBA um, and find out which local banks could be doing these loans. Um, Oakland County has also issued, we've allocated um, over 18, $1,850,000 dollars plus the states to uh, to get up to three million for small business loans. There are, there are thousands of applications. They are going to be considered in the next couple of days and within the next week. And these will be small, um, quick access loans to get some of our businesses going. So one of the things that we learned after the flood, which is interesting in 2014, we actually, and I'll give Commissioner Woodward and I, when we were in finance, we had a pandemic budget line after 2014 of one and a half million dollars. So we were able to appropriate that very quickly. And that was really the seed money that Oakland County was able to start doing um, looking for PPEs, doing feeding of you know, vulnerable people and all the other things. Since that point last week, we also appropriated another $5 million um, so that Oakland County has already done six and a half million because the money from the state and other places isn't coming in. I actually think we're gonna have to find a whole lot more money before this is over for, to help our residents in the county. Um, many of these orders, you talk about the health orders, they come out of the county, the screening of, of employees um, is an Oakland County order. Um, we're doing the best we can to try and get personal protection equipment, donations, and also purchases through our Oakland County Homeland Security person, Tom Hardesty, he's been taking orders, you know, people put in requests and he's been distributing them throughout our community. For example, JSL Senior Life got some masks, some PPE equipment through the county for their facility, which is housed in Oak Park. So there's a lot going on, obviously, from the county standpoint too. Um, I do want to remind everybody to get off the whole COVID it is it's census time. And I know that you're working hard on that too. And we need people to fill out their forms. I certainly did. And um, we got, because this is money that comes into our community for federal resources. And as we've said before, $1,800 per year for 10 years, it's a lot of person, a lot of money if you are counted under census. So I'm also open for any questions. That's it. Questions from the council. Yes. Uh, council member Edgar. I'm, I'm unmuting. Okay, hi. Um, so, so that was great that you had a line item. I think obviously you were thinking ahead the six and a half million, what, what will that be used for <clears throat> during this pandemic? Okay, so it's been um, over time for staff. You know, certain staff are working much harder. There was uh, different technology costs and updates. 
we we last week there was a 2.3 million dollar purchase of PPE equipment that will be distributed throughout the county. Um, there's been you know, there's been efforts housing the homeless, working on that and feeding them. So they are not carriers throughout our county, and I know that we you know purchased meals from small businesses. Those are some of the examples. So the PPE equipment is going to healthcare workers? It's, you know, I've got a whole long spreadsheet. It's going healthcare workers, senior facilities, our first, you know, police officers, cities, villages, townships. You know, there's a whole orderly distribution. We want to make sure that all of our public safety officers have equipment too. Some's gone to Beaumont, the different health facilities. Everybody is just scrambling for the equipment. Mm -hmm. Good. Wonderful. Um, I do want to say one more thing. I did, we've had a lot of different town hall meetings that have been conducted by our Oakland County exec, Dave Coulter and his team. And I heard sat in on one that would, there were many Oak Park residents on it. I think it was last Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday night. And lots of Oak Park people asking questions. I learned a lot. I thought it was a really good vehicle. Some of my friends in Oak Park said, I heard you, Helene. So they were obviously on as well. So I thought, and if, if, if this is helpful, we can do more of these through the county team. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else for me? Uh, thank you, um, Oakland County uh, Commissioner Helene Zach. We can always count on you for good information. Is there uh, anyone else in uh, listening <clears throat> who has something they would like to share? Hi, this is Kim Maroney again, the moderator. Just to remind guests who are here, we are not monitoring the chat room. If you would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand feature. There's someone with their hand up right now, Kim. It's Leslie. Leslie. Okay, um, Leslie, I'm going to <coughs> mute you. Hold on a second. I'm gonna lower your hand first. Okay, go ahead. Leslie, are you still there? Let me try to unmute her again. Hmm. Not sure why she's not able to speak. Leslie, can you hear us? Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Please raise your hand. I see some action in the chat room. Is that, can, can we access that or not? Um, it is recommended to not go through the chat room, but it is up to city council. Um, if we don't have hands raised at the moment, um, let's maybe go on to the calls next. We have a few callers here. Instead of going through the alphabet, I'm just going to read the last four digits of your phone number, um, and I'm going to unmute you all at the same time. Um, phone number ending in 1051, you're unmuted. Would you like to say anything? Uh, good evening, uh, Council. This is uh, Steve Cooper. Fortunately, I had a little uh, issue with my uh, microphone on the uh, desktop, so I actually called in to uh, be able to have the uh, the audio portion come through on my phone, but I did not have a comment. I just wanted to have that available in case questions uh, were going to be directed towards me. Great. Thank you. Yes, to VK700. The 
Was there anything you needed to say? Okay, moving on to the rest of the phone numbers. I think we've hit them all. So, oh, I'm sorry, there's one more. Um, guest ending in 9774. Was there anything you wanted to comment on? Okay. Um, Kim? Yes? Leslie did, Leslie did type that she was having issues with her audio, so maybe she could type in the chat what she wanted to share. That is council's decision if they'd like to recognize that. Mm -hmm. and I see city manager Eric Tungate has raised his hand. Madam Mayor, may I ch chime in? Please. Um, I, I just I have a couple things. One, um, Director Cooper, um, I want to commend you and your officers. Um, you, you guys don't know this, but Director Cooper's basically been sleeping here, you know, working just countless hours. And then with this homicide the other day, he's he's just been logged down. So thank you so much and to your officers as well. Um, Madam Mayor, I know there's a question on chat. If, if you would allow me um, and give me permission to answer it, I'd be, I'd be happy to. I would love all the questions on chat to be answered. Thank you. Um, just go ahead. Um, there's a question about 7-Eleven um, being open, I believe I saw. Um, and the question was about the Slurpee machines at 7-Eleven on, uh, it says on Lincoln, but um, the question, you know, no, um, I, I believe 7-Eleven is operating as a, essential business, if I'm not mistaken, but we can ask them to um, follow the social distancing guidelines. Um, so if you see that, you know, you can call the Oakland County helpline at 248-858-1000, or obviously you can always call the city's non-emergency number. So that, that was the other one. And then, then there's a question, um, There's a, oh, I That's believe this, do you want me to, um, this was, I believe Leslie um, had a question about a testing, why doesn't Oakland County have a testing facility in, in Oakland County? I'm not sure that I can answer that question actually. I don't know if we still have the commissioner on, but maybe she can. Let me unmute and commissioner is back. Let me see if she's still there. There was also a question after that, sealed with about the plasma donation center. Oh, okay. Okay. County commissioners, Zach, if we want to go back to that first. Okay. Am I unmuted now? Yes, you are. Okay. So we would absolutely love to have that rapid test and certainly are trying to get it, but we have not been, you know, Abbott Lab gave five to Detroit where there that is clearly the epicenter and we are trying to get that rapid test but so far not I wish we could okay um what was the other question I'm sorry there was another question someone mentioned plasma. the plasma donation center I'm not seeing that oh Re Detroit. Um, well, pl oh. donating plasma, I, I believe, and City Attorney Duff, if if I misspeak on this, please don't be afraid to chime in. But it, it's construed as essential, obviously, during a time like this, um, and and they too have to maintain proper social distancing. Um, and you know, if that's not happening, then we need to know about it, or you can call the county at two four eight eight five eight one thousand. I think this was called in. Um, the, the facility inside was okay. It was the people in line. And I think our public safety um, looked into that issue. And okay. The Murphy question was also called in earlier and, and brought up. I think Steve Cooper may be trying to say something. Steve, are you there? 
Hello, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, to the mayor's point, yes, we received a, an, an email uh, and a couple of concerns about the uh, line at the Plasma Center. And at that point, we uh, had our uh, public safety officers go out and actually uh, police that area. And we did so with, uh, with, with minimal issues. So if, uh, if our residents have similar issues or concerns regarding uh, not just the Plasma Center, but other areas in our, our city, uh, don't hesitate to call our non-emergency number, and we will definitely go out and investigate and do our best to uh, gain uh, voluntary compliance. <clears throat> Director Cooper, can you give that phone number? Yes. The uh, non-emergency uh, number would be 248-691-7520. Again, that's, uh, that's uh, area code 248 Six nine one seven five two zero. Follow the prompts, and then uh, once our dispatcher answers, just provide as much information and detail as possible, and we will uh, definitely go out and uh, investigate. If our residents or citizens are not actually sure uh, about the particulars, they still can give us a call, and uh, we can we can make sure that we can actually go out and, and, and cipher through and, and see what exactly we have. So we're more than happy to respond. Thank you. Um, bringing it back to um, public comment, we had a few people who just participated in the meeting. Um, in the call to audience, if you'd like to participate, use the raise your hand feature. You do that through selecting manage participants. And in that screen, you'll have an option to raise your hand. I just wanted to um, point out that in the comments, Shar Thomas typed, thank you for providing this meeting via this format. Oh. <clears throat> uh, thanks to our IT department and Director Maroney who have been working day and night. Um, I see Mayor Pro Tem has a question and she is muted at this time. She's unmuted now. Okay. No. Hello, I just wanted to go back. Eric, at the beginning of your city manager report, you mentioned the hackers, the hacking situation with the city. Could you elaborate a little bit and let me know where we are? And also, are there any other municipality, municipalities that's going through the same thing? Well, um, thank you for your question. I, I, um, I can't share too much um, because we're in the middle of an active investigation um, but I do understand that there were multiple um, public entities that were hacked into. Uh, I believe it was predominantly local units of government like ours. Um, very unfortunate situation. <laughs> um, and we're still in the middle of it. We, we are working with the FBI and um, we're trying to weed through it. I will have some more updates. I'll provide uh, city council as things progress. But um, right now we're just trying to get some of our captive information and and uh, work through some of the issues. Okay, thank you. I, one more thing, I also, it, I, I understand the, the hacking did occur from an overseas entity, they believe, which is just remarkable, um, but it is what it is. When it rains, it pours. We'll get through it. Um, Madam Mayor, can I ask Director Cooper to weigh in on um, religious gatherings. I know there's been a lot of questions from our residents. And oh, just before that, I thought we should give a big shout out to uh, Director Ricardo Singson, who was working on this day and night, this hacking uh, issue, uh, even though he had a broken collarbone. Yeah. So um, absolutely. The quiet people behind the scenes who are working. Uh, allowing most of us to stay home uh, are heroes. And speaking of heroes, um, uh, Director Cooper. Absolutely. Yeah, good evening again. Yes, as, as far as uh, what the city manager was addressing, as far as the religious institutions gathering for worship, uh, obviously the, the governor's orders speak for itself. Um, but obviously in this day and age and in the midst of this pandemic, 
Um, I think it would be very wise uh, if we could get voluntary cooperation to every extent possible for uh, some alternative means of worship, uh, those gatherings. Um, when you get large, obviously, when you get large crowds or groups together like that, it causes issues. You're looking at uh, uh, potentially a tremendous amount of spread as far as the, uh, the virus. It taxes our public safety resources greatly. Uh, we have to respond to every single medical run uh, that comes in through our 911 system, and it puts a tremendous amount of strain on an already uh, strained public safety department and force. So, uh, like I said, the governor's orders speak for itself, but to the extent possible from our religious leaders, just a, a, a plea uh, to them if they can find alternate means to uh, conduct their worship services and have, uh, you know, their time of faith, we would uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, as many public safety officers as I can keep in service, uh, the better. Like I said, you never know when uh, one of those calls may be uh, critical and that we may need to respond to your residents to, to assist you, and we want to have all available staff on deck. So, you know, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And thank you, uh, boss, for allowing me to uh, have a few words regarding that matter as well. And then, um, uh, Director Cooper, if a, if a resident notices that a, a market or uh, a hardware store isn't enforcing uh, six foot distances, uh, should they call that non emergency number about those issues as well? I know that I've reported several of them already. Um, uh, does your staff look into that? Yeah, like I said, what, what we would like to do is is if the if the residents could bring bring that attention, bring that to the attention of the management staff initially, and see if they can get some voluntary cooperation. Obviously, you have a lot of uh, you know employees there working. They're trying to do their best through some very difficult times, and they may not be. Uh, totally aware of what's going on. If they could contact someone from the management staff and bring that to it to their attention, and if they could mitigate that, that would be great. If not, then for sure, uh, you're absolutely welcome to call, you know, public safety, and we will come out and do our best. Um, obviously, every call that we're on uh, limits our ability to respond to to other runs, and like I said, we're doing our best to practice the social distancing as well. So when we come out to respond to those runs that could be handled uh, internally by management. Again, it puts our staff at risk, and we need to keep every single uh, public safety officer that we can available to respond for uh, for all of our, our necessary priority uh, emergencies. So residents could ask the, to see the manager of the um, uh, place of business and um, discuss that with them, and hopefully that would be enough to change the behavior. Or like I said, I know a lot of people are uh, practicing a social distance, put in a phone call. Uh, we have great business owners here in the city of Oak Park. And as I drive through the city on a daily basis, um, uh, you know, it's being demonstrated you know, constantly and, uh, and they wanna do the right things as well. So I would say first give them an opportunity. And if you don't want to uh, meet face to face, obviously, Give them, a, give them a call and ex express your concerns. And if, uh, if that doesn't work, then, then yes, give us a call and we'll come out and do our best. Um, Mayor, we had a guest, Ken Sherman, who had his hand raised. He put it down, but I wanna give him an opportunity to make his comment if he would like. Yeah. You're unmuted, Ken. Oh, your audio does not seem very clear. Try again. We may not be able to contact him. Hmm. He okay. could also put his, we, put his comments um, we can look at the chat room and see your comments there. There was also a comment from Tyler belts in the chat room as well. Oh. Um, he just said, is the city of Oak Park preparing for future pandemics if anything like this was to occur again? 
Here is Council Member Radner may have replied. Would you like to comment? Yeah, I simply uh, pointed out that there's really very little city that a local city government can do um, for a pandemic like this. The onus is really on the federal government, the state government, and much larger government entities than us. We can make sure that our employees and, and residents are behaving as appropriately as possible, and we can make sure that our uh, public safety is equipped with PPE and equipped with the knowledge necessary to respond to these kinds of things. But the reality is there's very little that a small city can do for something like this. I see Eric has something to say as well. Uh, we need to uh, unmute, there he goes. Okay, just, um, just to piggyback on um, Council Member Radner's comments, you know, that is absolutely the case. And, and one of the other things that I would add to that is, you know, we've set aside about 20 some percent of our, our uh, general fund in our general fund balance, our rainy day fund as it's called for dealing with the unexpected. And this is, you know, as, as weird as this situation might be or, or whatever you wanna call it, th this is why we do that. So it's the unforeseen situations that we couldn't have predicted that come up, um, but yeah, our, our, our means and our ability to prepare for a, a global pandemic are, are pretty limited. We are wards of the state constitution. We're a local unit of government, just like the county is. And, and uh, you know, we have to uh, take our marching orders from the governor at this point. Okay, Mayor, I see no more comments, no more hands raised. Um, Clerk Ed Norris, was there anything that was emailed to be read into record? I have not received any emails to report. Okay, that should conclude this portion of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if there is a question in chat and we haven't responded to it, we will get back to you. Um, do we have, uh, if we're finished with comments from the audience, we have comments from council at this point. Um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Carolyn Burns. Hello, everyone. Thank you for those who joined us via our Zoom during these unprecedented times. Please stay healthy, be safe, have a pleasant evening. Right, and, um, and thank you. Um, Council Member Julie Edgar. Yes, I'm just gonna echo what Carolyn said. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem Burns, excuse me, that um, I hope everybody is staying as safe as they can. Please stay put. Try not to leave your house too much. Um, I, if you feel like telling somebody outside in public who's not practicing social distancing to please practice, go ahead. Um, it all helps. And as, as Pub Public Safety Director Steve Cooper pointed out, it costs a lot of money to send ambulances out. So it's better to stay healthy. And good night. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, Council member Solomon Radner. Um, the one thing I would wanna add is that uh, as a volunteer member of Hatsala, I've been working very closely with Alliance and Oak Park Public Safety. And um, there have just been a, a tremendous number of COVID related calls recently. And uh, I've really been very surprised and in a very good way, very humbled by how uh, everybody is really coming together, not only the members of the EMS community, but members of the general public as well. You know, if we look around and we try to look for problems and, and people who are not doing what they're supposed to do or doing what they're not supposed to do, we'll be able to find it. You'll always be able to find it. But the reality is the overwhelming majority of the people that I've seen, uh, members of the general public, as well as those in the government, have really been striving with their best efforts to do what's right. And uh, it, it, it's something that I've noticed and I just wanted to publicly acknowledge. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Uh, Council Member Regina Weiss. Thank you. Um, I completely agree with everything that Council Member Radner just stated. Um, 
one thing that has been very inspiring to me during this entire um, this entire endeavor is just how many people have stepped up in huge and small ways um, in order to reach out and help out everyone around them. Um, obviously, our public safety, first responders, huge thank you to them and everything that they've been doing to keep our city safe and, and all uh, public safety and first responders um, in our country, as well as healthcare workers um, who are putting their lives on the line to help fight this pandemic. And, and food service workers and other essential service workers, just a huge thank you to you. Um, and just the little things that people in the community are doing. I walk around, I see signs, pe people put out um, sidewalk chalk. People, one of my neighbors had uh, set up a pantry, a free little pantry outside their house to help their neighbors. And I think it's amazing. And I just wanna thank all of our residents um, for stepping up in those big and small ways to help each other out. One of our own, um, uh, public safety officers, Robert Cook, actually gave out several personal masks that he made to residents. Um, so thank you to him and others who are doing that. Um, and I also just one other thing, want to circle back to something that our Oakland County Commissioner brought up earlier, which is our census. Um, I know that right now, obviously, COVID is top of mind, and that's all we're really thinking about. But the census is so important because this is going to determine funding for and other um, essential things that we need in our community for the next 10 years. Um, currently in Oak Park, 57.8% of our residents have responded to the census. Um, Michigan is actually third in the nation right now in terms of response rate, which is great, but we can do better. Um, Pleasant Bridge and Huntington Woods, uh, both next door neighbors, are over 70% response rate. So I think we can, uh, I think we can do better. And I would just want to encourage residents, take a few minutes. It only takes a couple minutes to fill it out. You do it on your computer and you're done. Um, please do that. Thank you so much and have a great night. Um, Council Member Weiss, if you don't want to do it by computer, is the number on the paper that you got, the number that you called <laughs> the phone? Um, I believe so. And I think that they're also sending out, um, I have, I did my, via paper so I, or via um, online. So I'm not, I didn't get an online questionnaire, but I know that online or, or paper questionnaire, but I know that paper questionnaires are also be, being sent out to people who aren't filling out the online version. Thank you so much. Um, our businesses are, uh, a lot of them are closed and are having a hard time. We have uh, small businesses in Oak Park as they do elsewhere in the country. And we want them to survive the economic challenges that come with this epidemic. Restaurants are staying open. Many of our restaurants have carry out meals. So if you could support our restaurant, they make it through this time. Um, most of the time you can order by phone or online and they will run it out to you. Um, on our toolkit, we have a list of local residents that are restaurants that are open and available. Uh, we will, as City Manager Chungate said, uh, we will do the work to bring the economy back when this ends. We have good people in the city of Oak Park, a good location, and conditions ripe for future success. Thank you to Eric Tungate, our highly effective city manager, who works tirelessly and keeps us ahead of the curve. As he mentioned, he made sure we had lots of exciting things to do with that 20%, but he guarded it carefully, knowing that there would be some crisis coming up. And thank goodness he did that. Our, our rainy day fund has met its rainy day. Um, we have a cushion and an emergency. Uh, Eric also put us on a growth trajectory, planned all the infrastructure improvements that you saw put our unfunded liabilities on a study, steady plan to reach funded status. He saved us money uh, by refinancing road bonds so our taxes went down. He saw the financial downturn coming and took steps necessary to prepare. We are blessed to have his leadership at this time. We'd also like to thank the generosity and leadership of our local religious leaders who closed their churches and synagogues during these major holidays of Easter and Passover, major, major holidays. 
They're committed, caring people who are reaching out to their congregations in new ways. And surely we all need prayer to get us through these times. So stay connected with your place of worship. And please add all the people with COVID-19 to your prayer list. Um, uh, thank you for staying home, for being careful, for not traveling. Um, feel better, Mr. Sandweiss, and let's beat this thing, Oak Park. We can do it. There being no further business to come before this council, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.